Okay, this week is, uh, is an, ocean. It, an ocean. An ocean? An ocean. And uh, I like their logo because it it's reminds cool. it reminds me of Echo the Dolphin, which was like the best Sega game ever. I'm glad you, you know the product is named Echo. Oh, well, I'm saying. So maybe they really that also was a nice were game. fans. Isn't I like that game because it was like, oh, I'm just a dolphin. I'm just like helping out, you know, yeah. doing stuff. Okay. Okay, this week, I'm actually really glad because this is a product that I've known about for a really long time and um, this finally showed up on digikey.com slash new and I was like, this is a really cool product I want people to know about. Uh, so this is, um, there's an, it's, a, it's a development kit, the EDK 350U and 350. There's two versions, uh, basically depending on what frequency band, 868 or 915 megahertz, uh, depending on if you're in the US or uh, Asia, Europe. So what is this? Um, this is a, a dev kit for, I, mean, I love this dolphin. Um, it's a dev kit for basically all of Enocean's uh, wireless sensor technology and energy harvesting uh, tools. So what I like about this is it's kind of like a little bento box where you get um, one of each of their sensors and switches and I'll show them on the overhead as well, as well as the radio control board, uh, USB key and everything. So you get like a little bit of everything and their software. So you get to really experiment um, with their you know, battery-less technology. Uh, and I thought that was interesting because, you know, we, I looked back at a bunch of the uh, INMPIs that we did recently, and, you know, there's one thing that comes up over and over again is low power, sensor, IoT, you know, sensors got very, very cheap, right? You can now get accelerometers, temperature sensors, humidity sensors for under a dollar, which is wonderful. Um, but, you know, then you're not, now you have to deal with them as an engineer. Like, you, you as an engineer have to power them, you have to get the data around with them, you have to uh, maintain and wire them, and that's actually uh, really challenging because the moment you have something that's battery powered, as everyone knows, you have to constantly recharge it. Like you have a phone, if you don't charge it every day or two, uh, the battery runs out. So wireless gives and takes. It's, it's very nice for people to take things around untethered, but you also have to maintain them. Um, and so, you know, one of the, I was thinking about like, how do we solve this in general? One, if you have a phone, you just know you have to charge it if you want to use it. Um, for other, uh, you know, sensors that we have, you know, in industry, like I was thinking, you know, we solved the issue of like, what happens when the battery runs out of your smoke detector, right? This is a, a very common wireless sensor. Uh, it's not IoT, but it's a standalone. But you know, it has a nine volt battery in it. And it runs for like, you know, almost a year, but eventually the battery runs out. And then there's this, there's this really big challenge with, um, especially with fire alarms, uh, smoke detectors, because you know, they're, they're so safety oriented, like you really want to make sure they're running. You almost never need them, but when you need them, they really need to be working. And the problem is, is that when the battery runs out, you can't notify somebody that the battery ran out. Like there's no indicator of like, this thing isn't working anymore. And so you have to notify people when the battery gets low, but not so low that it can't notify anymore. And so, you know, uh, for um, a lot of uh, smoke detectors, they have like a beep, you know, but like, what if it's a winter home or a summer home and you don't, you're not there and you, you're out for the week, uh, you're on vacation, you come back, you don't realize that it's been beeping for a few weeks and maybe the battery has, has died. And so this issue of what do you do when you as an engineer have a sensor network or sensor nodes, you wanna collect the data, but you don't want to deal with the battery management because you know not only does it take wireless of course takes a lot of power to transmit um, and so that's going to drain your battery but even rechargeable batteries have self-discharge rates so um N ocean came up with this idea of well what if we just didn't have batteries <laughs> they, they were like what if we just took out that part because if you have wireless technology but you don't have a battery you don't have to deal with the wiring you don't have to deal with the maintenance you don't have to deal with the replacement and you also place you can literally put them anywhere you want in a duct behind a wall because you never have to get to it um so an ocean um is you know kind of famous for their kinetic energy harvesting but they you know they also have solar which we'll talk about and i remember when this came out in like early 2000s because at the media lab we were like oh my god this is the thing that everyone's always talking about how can we have you know, sensor data radios that work without batteries. Um, and so the way it works is, and you can, you know, watch a full video about it, but basically you have, it actually reminds me, I'll tell you what actually um, 
because my partner at the time was researching these. You know those clickers that you use for your um, your stove? If you have a gas yeah. stove and you have to have a little clicker, and it you, know, you 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 press and there's this like strong click, and then um, the uh, whatever the the material um, uh, activates the the flame, and then you can. Um, use that, you know, the gas inside, and then you can use that to light your stove or your pilot light. Um, so it's the same idea. It's like this very, it's a very tough spring. And, you know, as you pull back, this, you know, the spring activates, and then you finally reach this activation point, um, and it, the spring releases, and then you get this, uh, the coil moves, and the coil movement, uh, sorry, the material movement through the coil activates a, a magnetic field, and the magnetic field um, generates a small amount of current that goes um, through the coil and can turn on your electronics. It's a very small amount. You know, you have to very quickly convert it because it's AC. You have to convert it to DC, um, and you have to get it to a reasonable amount. Um, but you can. It looks like they basically are like, look, you get about 100 to 200 microjoules at two volts, which you know might be enough to transmit a very quick amount of uh, packetized data over radio. Um, yes, yeah, so many piezoelectric sparking lighters, correct. Uh, it feels just like that. It's not the same thing, but that's what it feels like. You, you have to kind of press hard. And uh, this, you know, this was a patented design that they came out with. And again, I remember when, when this came out, because we were like, this is really cool um, to see somebody actually take this theoretical, um, I mean, it's not theoretical, people had been doing this, but take, taking something to production, which would actually be usable by engineers um, as a module. So they've sold the ECO, the ECHO, 200 um, and this little module you can see the coil you can see the little the mechanical switch um, the magnetic and this is what uh, does the energy harvesting and then it you match it up with a radio because of course the radio has to be designed so it can work at the voltage and the the micro joule capabilities right you can't take too long to wake up you have to wake up instantly sense the data you need to and immediately send it because there is the the data is only available for that few milliseconds after the click um, it is not a long-term harvester. Uh, so there's also a data sheet about this. So you can, you can get the individual modules. Um, and then, you know, what's, what is interesting is you probably have seen this. We actually had one of these hue taps. Yeah. Um, so you remember it was a kind of like you had to press the button and you, it would click and yeah. then it would turn on the lights. So this was kind of a brilliant idea because the Philips Hue is a uh, Zig, Zigbee wireless um, LED lighting system and so having a wired switch didn't make a lot of sense and also like why have batteries that you have to maintain and manage yeah. when you don't have to you it's okay to have the feeling of oh I'm clicking something to, to turn on and off the lights so um, it did make it into you know popular industry um, they have a bunch of different modules uh, like I said 800 uh, say 868 900 uh, they also have Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz which is kind of cool they have Zigbee um, all the individual radio pieces uh, you know, that you can mix and match to, to make it work with your existing system. Although I think the best efficiency you're going to get is when you use their own radios, of course. Um, and they've also expanded to not only have uh, piezoelectric, not piezoelectric, magnetoelectric, uh, kinetic energy harvesting, also solar. Solar is, of course, going to be a little different because, you know, you, you put it under a fluorescent light, you know, in an office or something, and it, you know, slowly, slowly, slowly charges up a little uh, you know, uh, super cap or built-in um, lithium coin cell um, until it gets to a certain amount and then uh, it can then burst data out. This one, of course, you know, may take longer for it to um, charge up, but it can be repetitive, you know, something that sends data once a day. And again, there's no maintenance. You can put it anywhere you want as long as there's some light. It works basically the way a solar calculator does. And there's a couple modules for that as well. I think there's like a humidity and temperature sensor and of course the built-in um, radios. Um, they also have like a really funny YouTube video that's three hours long where this guy and he like kills like three hours. He wants to say like, hey, you know, normally if you have to install a wired switch and you have to pull the wiring through the wall, it takes three hours and 20 minutes. So for three hours and 20 minutes, he's just on this YouTube video. Anyways, uh, check it out. Available on DigiKey <laughs> and it is in stock. Yeah, I thought I would just show really fast. I did pick yeah. one up. Do you want to uh, go to the other hand? Yeah, let's go to the other hand. I'll just quickly show off. It's what they call people, the unboxing. People in can the biz. see how. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of unboxed already. You get the the manual. 
you get a USB cable. Um, so this is the control board. So this is the receiver, which you would USB power. Um, and this is what would get the data in so you can, um, this is not what, this is not the wirelessly charged part. This is the yeah. receiver that would be part of your, like your data harvesting setup or your, you know, hue bulb controller. And then um, this is the solar panel. Yep. With, uh, you can sort of see this, the solar cells, um, little battery, um, and this is a microcontroller yeah. um, and antenna. And then um, the fun part is. Oh, the goodies. Yeah, so this is the um, mechanical switch. So, you know, as you as you click it, it is uh, generating a little bit of current. And what's interesting about this is it's actually designed to not require soldering. So um, I removed this from the back of, you know, this was, this uh, radio is attached on. So there's these touch points. And if you look carefully, you can see there's these little gold oh, yeah. pads where this would just clip in. And so, you know, if necessary, you can replace this part. Um, and then this is the clicky switch also. This is basically the same thing inside of here, yeah. but it has a nice um, two-way switch up or down. Yep. So you can have two options. And then here's another radio receiver so you can use their um, radio network and use their software to you know detect basically when you've you've pressed the switch up and down. So I think it's interesting. Andy. You know, this is this is you know, you want to do energy harvesting. It's totally a pain um, because there's so much tuning. Like I remember like, you know, talking to people who were trying to do this kind of thing on their own and it was basically like you spend all of your time tuning an inductor and the coil and trying to get it to like work exactly right and then the amount of it's, it, it's hard to measure because as you measure it it's probably um, not reliable unless you use something like this which is yeah that. it's yeah. basically like they really figured this out so if you want to do energy harvesting um or kinetic um powered electronics like just get their module and you plug it in and like you're ready to go okay and we have a video Hi, I'm Walt Siskins, the CEO of Inocean. We are the world leader in energy harvesting wireless technology. What got me hooked to this company is this little device called a mechanical energy harvester. By pressing this switch, we generate enough energy to send a wireless signal. Now let me show you what our customers have built from this technology. This is an example of Philips. It's a switch that can turn off a lamp, an LED lamp, and generate different scenes, different colors. Another example is what's called the water sensor. This sensor functions on the basis of the same technology. In the back, you'll see some letter rings that will expand when in water and press effectively the same device to send a wireless signal, turn off the valve and prevent more water damage. Other sources of energy that we use are light, like in the example of this window contact that senses whether a window is open or closed. Another alternative that we use is temperature like in this heating valve, this an ocean enabled heating valve uses the temperature differences in its own radiator to adjust the temperature based on the control system it's connected to. Also, no wires, no batteries. Now I got hooked to this company by this device, the mechanical energy harvester. I'm curious what can get you hooked to an ocean, to our technology and what products you can think of using no wires and no batteries.